Hey guys, this is FK. So um, five months ago, we made a video about Starlink. So we got Starlink and we started using it for our internet service. And uh, we did a video then after using it for like three weeks. And then I told myself that I was also going to make another video after six months. And through this review, I'm going to be talking about Starlink performance under different headings like durability, speed, pricing, how it works in the rain. Yeah, a lot of people have asked that question. And also, um, it's user experience, the whole user experience, especially when using it for streaming services like Netflix or Amazon Prime. So here's my review, six months after using Starlink. So the first point I'm going to be talking on is durability. And what I would say is so far so good. I've not had any issue with the hardware. I heard that some people had issues with the hardware even straight out of the box after they ordered it. But um, I got my own in good condition. And since then, I've not had any issue with the hardware. The hardware has been good. Even the one, I, even the unit outside that has withstood a whole lot of rain. And right now, we're still in the raining, raining season. It has withstood a whole lot of rain and it's just staying steady. Sometimes I just go to peep at it to see whether everything is still good, even though the internet service is still working. But everything has been fine. The router has been good. I I don't really move it around i just keep it on top of my fridge so yeah in terms of durability everything has stayed good stayed well the indoor unit is fine we don't really disturb it and the outdoor unit that has been exposed to a lot of weather conditions and rain and sun and everything is still standing sturdy so in terms of durability i'm going to be giving them an a so one thing that a lot of people discovered after ordering starlink is its performance during rain when rain is falling i don't know how that information didn't uh, get across to us over here before purchasing it but when we started using it a lot of people started witnessing a degrade or a decline in its performance during uh, when it's raining and sometimes it just the service just goes off but i'm going i'm going to um say it has not been as bad as advertised because um it, 60 percent of the time is still working when rain is falling except you have all these heavy rains or the cloud is really really cloudy that is when it gets disrupted like it just it just goes off and immediately the rain settles it comes back on and for for some sort of uh, perspective is way better than what you experience when you use dstv you know that's when you use dstv in the rain it's way better than the kind of uh, experience you have when using something like dstv that just starts um breaking messing up the whole signal and everything this one when it's when it can't undo the rain it simply just shuts off and once the rain is over it comes back so i will say 60 percent of the time it still works when rain is falling so i don't think that is a major deal breaker and you know it's nigeria you should always have backup <laughs> so i still have my mtn router as a backup and sometimes even the mtn itself is down but i still have my mtn router as a backup to just plug in for the 5 10 15 minutes that the starlink is down and once the starlink is back i switch back to it so the next thing i'm going to be talking about is speed now when it, when we first got it everything was cool it was moving at least for our own area we were getting something between 75 and uh, i think 160 mbps but there was a time like a month after it started degrading for some reason in fact there was some time that i would have to switch back to my mtn um modem but later on we had this announcement that starlink released more satellites and i don't know how, whether that was directly related to the improvement we started seeing after but after that announcement the speed just improved and it never declined since then it has just been very very smooth in fact right now we're currently getting between 95 to 220 mbps so it has just been stable and i've not even had in fact i don't even really do speed test again because the experience is actually uh pleasing uh with the i use netflix uh youtube and also amazon prime and this is just touch and follow, follow at this point i just play a video and watch it till the end i don't really have any kind of interruptions or breakages in between so the speed has been fair for gamers i'm sorry i'm not <laughs> an heavy gamer myself so i can't really tell you much about the speed when it comes to online gaming but i think the speed test should kind of give you an idea of the kind of experience you will have when using starlink for your online gaming but as far as speed goes i think for the for the fair user even for the heavy user i think it has been uh very very good one thing i didn't know uh before when i got the device when i first got the device one thing i didn't know is that you can actually split the 5g and the 4G signal, I believe. I believe the other one is 4G. You can actually split these two signals. So I splitted mine and I started connecting all to the 5G. That's for devices that um, can support 5G. The devices in my house that can support 5G, which is just mainly my laptop. But other other devices, other phones that are connected to the 4G, they've also been excellent. So I won't really say there was a major impact of starting to use the 5G version. The whole experience has just been amazing. The upload speeds have never been impressive, so we're still getting something between 10 and 15 Mbps. So if that works for your use case, then I, it's going to be perfect. Uh, but when, when it comes to up downloads, it has been amazing, smooth, excellent. I have no complaint. So the next thing I'm going to be talking on is pricing. And we can finally say we have 
naira pricing yes you don't you no longer need to do all those um exchange rate gymnastics in your head when you're trying to buy sterling you can now pay in naira but it's kind of weird ordering a new sterling right now because you they don't give you the price straight that's if you want to order a new device you have to pick your location and check for availability and they're going to check whether they are available in that area and even if they are available, they're also going to check if they are not at capacity. That means if they don't have like the maximum number of devices that they allow to operate in that area. So sometimes Starlink is available in a, in a particular area, but they've already exhausted or like uh, maxed out the number of devices that can op operate in that area. So to order a new device, first, it has to be available in that area. Second, it, you, they have to know that they are not maxed out. So once they confirm these two, then they can show you the price for the device. For the particular area you want to buy it they still kind of do the pricing on a global scale so i believe probably they're trying to know whether you are in the us or you're in the uk or you're in nigeria to give you the actual price so that's that's that for uh purchasing the device and also for now you can still only purchase the device from their website i know that a lot of third party people have come up to say they can get styling for people and also install it for them more like the dstv vendors that we have today but I don't think Starlink has anointed any official third party to help them to distribute their product or install them. So for now, you still have to be careful about who you're buying your devices from. As for the monthly subscription, that has also been changed to Naira. In fact, I was I got an email that I should change my dollar card, that that's the one I entered into their portal, to a Naira one. Like it was compulsory. You had to change it because they have moved from the $42 pricing to 38000 Now they call it 38000 which I didn't really like because I think the $42 was kind of cheaper than 38 k But for the experience, it, it was still, it, it, I knew it was still going to be worth it because I knew how many modems I was combining before. I was combining MTN, Intel, and uh, Airtel. Yeah, I was combining these modems and now I've discarded most of them except the MTN that I'm using as backup. I've discarded most of them because of the reliability of the Starlink uh, service. But now, you have to pay 38000 every month to get the unlimited subscription package. So for pricing, I'm going to give them a B because in as much as I like the fact that we can now use Naira and more people can get to buy it, I am not totally sure I'm okay with the 38000 Naira monthly subscription pricing. But it's still fair. It's still good. For what I'm getting, I will still pay that. So that's my six months review of Starlink. Uh, if you're interested in getting the device, you can always go to their site to purchase one. Like I said, you have to make sure that it is uh, available in your area and you also make sure that your area is currently not at capacity. And like I said, beware of top party vendors because Starlink has not announced any official distributor. See you in another video.